bank runs over in Europe. Uh, there's a number of banks in Italy, Spain, and France now that are showing that uh, uh, your ATM cards won't work, and the people, the customers are unable to make transactions, and uh, you know people that have direct deposit are having their funds, uh, who knows, disappear into thin air, rehypothecated. Uh, maybe they've already been bet and used, or maybe there's no money in the system at all. I would say all of the above are probable. Now, these bank runs are starting in Europe. It's a slow wave, it looks like. You know, I thought this thing would come unraveling a lot faster than it is. But, bank runs in Europe, we got bank runs in, in America. We're gonna see them here. Um, people should be preparing for a day where you go to swipe your plastic and it doesn't work. It won't work at the grocery store, at the fuel pump. You don't have access to the funds in the bank. The only money that you should have in the bank right now is the money that you need to use for your day-to-day -day expenses and to pay your bills. Uh, anything above that, if you've got like a savings account with five, 10 grand in it, get it the hell out of there. This entire system is on the verge of collapse. And if you think that the FDIC is going to save you, let me tell you, it will not. What has happened is JP Morgan and Bank of America both have exposure to the derivatives market in excess of $70 trillion a piece. And now what they've done is because of the breakdown of Glass-Steagall, uh, the separation between investment banking and deposit banking, regular commercial banking, is that these, uh, these derivative gambling debts, these are just bets. They're, it's no different than what you do at the casino. They've taken the uh, liabilities of these gambling debts and put them on the back of the FDIC. Uh, the Federal Deposit Insurance Company or Corporation, and that is backed by the taxpayers. So in essence, the taxpayers are backing all of these derivatives. Uh, the small banks out there that pay huge premiums to keep that FDIC insurance should be completely pissed off right now because there is absolutely no solvency in an insurance that has these kinds of liabilities on their books. Uh, you know, the credit default swaps don't require that there be any collateral to pay off these insurance schemes. And uh, the interest rate swaps, which make up the majority of the thing, could all just be triggered by an increase in the, in the, uh, in the interest rates. And nobody is going to be able to pay off those, those debts. The FDIC isn't going to be able to unless there's going to be some big massive printing. Uh, and, and that's already... Any more printing done by the uh, by the Fed is going to be, you know, they're already buying the, the Treasury bonds, and that's another big trigger with this uh, this whole paper collapse is that the Federal Reserve is pretty much the only group out there buying Treasury bonds. Everybody across the globe is probably getting ready to dump their Treasury bonds, and once that happens, there's going to be no stopping it, and no slowdown to it. More importantly and it'll all become worthless paper. They can print as many dollar notes as they want. They can print as many uh, treasury, uh, treasury bonds as they want. It will have zero purchasing power overseas. Uh, the Chinese can back the yuan with gold and Saudi Arabia, uh, I believe, will no longer accept paper notes for their oil. They're gonna, they're gonna want uh, gold or, uh, or gold-backed currency. Uh, it kind of blew up in their faces when they put the uh, sanctions on Iran and said you can't use the SWIFT system for uh, uh, to do transactions with Iran because of the sanctions. All right, so India just started buying oil from Iran with gold. Yeah, you cannot beat that deal. Uh, the people have to walk away from all of this fiat currency. And a way of doing that is buy, buying silver and using it as a means of barter and exchange. If we if we use something else other than the dollar, 
we can get around all their taxation schemes, all their inflation schemes. We can have a sound, honest currency that retains its value, and and we walk away from this this debt paradigm that's brought us nothing but debt and debt. Uh, so that's my spiel for today. Please uh, start uh, figuring out how to produce food and fuel at the local level using barter or using silver as uh, an initial means of barter until we get something. Uh, something else in place but something that can be picked up right away and um, get your get your money out of these 401ks and think if you can cash out a pension fund the pension funds and the social security all this promise to pay I believe that a worker should be paid what he's worth at the time that he's worked all of these future promises are nothing but Ponzi schemes and I feel very bad for the people that are, uh, you know, expecting the Social Security and, and all these baby boomers that have paid into the system. Well, if you have paid into the, if you have been paying attention to the system that you paid into, then you would realize that uh, you're not going to see any of that money back. You expect the next generation to uh, to pick up that tab, and that's impossible because there's not enough of us to. Uh, to make up the difference and uh, frankly I'm not paying into a Ponzi scheme you guys got duped I'm not paying for it so I suggest you all move some of your savings into some uh, some real tangible assets uh, gold silver uh, the real estate market is going to take a hell of a hit especially when the states are out of money and need to start selling their property uh, but like I said uh, the FDIC is insolvent don't count on it uh, your, your paper and plastic are as good as you know what they can do for you uh, holding in your hand uh, Food and fuel <laughs> produce food and fuel